25-year-old Danita Smith was born on November 20, 1981, in Charlotte, North Carolina. She was pursuing her master's at North Carolina Central University in Durham and had dreams of becoming a photojournalist and had earned a fellowship with the New York Times. She was described as highly ambitious with big plans for her future. Just a few months prior, her boyfriend, Jameer Stroud, proposed to her and they became engaged. They previously met in college and were dating for six years. Eventually, she stayed in Durham to complete school, and he moved to Greensboro to work as a police officer, but they still maintained the relationship. Around 10 a.m., a resident of the Campus Crossings apartment complex was heading to work when he saw a number of personal belongings scattered down the staircase. At the end of the stairs, he saw a body of a woman that appeared to have fallen down. The man observed that she was not breathing or moving, but among the scattered items, he found an ID. The woman was Danita Smith. He then called the police to report what he witnessed. When the police arrived, they initially thought she suffered a fatal fall. However, upon closer inspection, it became clear that she was brutally executed. Danita's keys, purse, and wallet were scattered, with money still in the wallet, so robbery was quickly ruled out. The police were also informed of a call that was made earlier that morning. At around 8 a.m., the maintenance director of the complex heard a gunshot and saw a woman running from the back to the front of the building. When he approached her to see how she was, she had her hands in front of her mouth while shaking and crying. He asked her if she heard the gunshot and she said yes and that she was afraid of guns. The maintenance man then called 911, but even though police arrived, they could not locate where the shot came from and the woman left so a report was never filed. He described the woman as a tall black woman around 5'10 with a ponytail and driving a burgundy Ford Explorer. Police soon questioned Jameer. The police asked him where he was that morning, and he said he was asleep in bed as he worked the night before. They then asked if he knew anyone who drove a burgundy truck, and Jameer said yes, he did. His ex and single mother of two, Shannon Crawley. Danita did not know who Shannon was and had never even met her before. However, Shannon knew of Danita and Jameer. Shannon worked as a 911 dispatcher in Greensboro where Jameer worked. Jameer was still engaged to Danita, but Shannon had no idea and they began an affair shortly. One day after the murder, the police went to Shannon's work to question her. Shannon told the police that on the day of Danita's murder, she was home with a sick child and went into work later that day. She also mentioned that she dated Jameer, but broke up with him when she didn't want to have his baby. The police then asked Shannon if she knew Danita Smith, and Shannon said that was Jameer's ex-girlfriend, and she never met her but saw a picture of her once. The police asked Shannon one more question, if she had a gun, and Shannon said no. Two days after the murder, Jameer was brought in for questioning. Jameer was asked about his relationship with Shannon, and he admitted he had an affair, but that it was stupid and it ended a year before Danita's murder. The police asked Jameer if he was stalking Shannon, and Jameer said it was the opposite. Jameer said Shannon was the stalker, and she was the one who wanted to have a baby with him, but that he broke up with her after that. When police asked Jameer if there was any reason Shannon would want her dead, he told them that Shannon would not leave him alone after the relationship ended. In fact, she joined his same church and moved into a house in his neighborhood. 
Jameer was ruled out for the time being and was free to go, but the police were now very suspicious of Shannon. The police obtained a warrant for Shannon's house and truck, as well as her phone records. Shannon's phone records showed that she was in Durham the day of the murder and that her phone pinged off a tower a quarter mile away from the campus crossings apartments. The police also tested Shannon's car for gunshot residue, especially the steering wheel. It came back positive and the police were confident that they had a case. On January 9, 2007, Shannon Crawley was arrested for the murder of Danita Smith and eventually was released on bail until her trial and moved to Charlotte with her kids and parents. Shannon's parents said that Jameer started calling Shannon again and that they came up with a plan to have her record their phone calls. In the audio recordings, Jameer is heard asking, who have you been talking to? Shannon said she wasn't talking to anyone and Jameer called her a liar. Shannon asked why this was happening and Jameer told her it was because of her, Danita found out about them and was pulling away. Jameer kept threatening Shannon and said if she kept talking, he'd find her. Shannon said, what, you'll kill me too? Jameer said, you know I'll do it again. Shannon and her parents thought they had enough evidence and gave the tapes to Shannon's attorneys. On February 8, 2010, Shannon's trial began where she pleaded not guilty. The prosecution portrayed Shannon as the stalker, but her defense said Jameer was the stalker and the real killer. Shannon testified on her own behalf and told the court that she was afraid of Jameer. Shannon told the court that the day before Danita was shot, the 3rd of January, she returned home to find Jameer inside her bedroom. Shannon told the court that the day before Danita was shot, she returned home to find Jameer inside her bedroom. She said that he indicated he had a weapon and told her to be quiet. Shannon said that he drove her to Durham and then back to Greensboro. She said the same thing happened the morning that Danita was shot. He drove her SUV and left the SUV for several minutes when they got to the campus. Shannon testified that she got out of the SUV because she heard noises. She told the court that she heard a brief argument followed by a gunshot. At that stage, she was about three or four feet in front of the vehicle when she heard the gunshot. According to Shannon, Jameer shot Danita. In her testimony, she said Jameer ran back to the SUV and got into the driver's seat before switching with her and jumping into the back seat. Shannon said that it was at that point that she saw the maintenance man. Shannon told the court he didn't see Jameer as he was crouched in the back of the vehicle. She said she did as she was told by Jameer as he had threatened to harm her children. On February 11th, Jameer took the stand. He said he was so surprised when the police asked him if he knew of anyone who would want to kill Danita and that the witnesses saw a burgundy truck fleeing the scene. Jameer said he knew that Shannon was stalking him, but never thought she'd murder Danita. The prosecution also stated that Danita had no idea that Jameer and Shannon were having an affair, and she had absolutely no clue that she was in danger the day she was shot. A forensic pathologist testified that Danita was killed by a distant range gunshot wound to the head. On the last day of Shannon's trial, her secret recordings were played. The prosecution responded by saying Jameer had a very unique and deep voice and that the voices on the tapes were very high pitched. Many of Danita's friends and family also thought the voices were different and they began to think that Shannon was manipulating everyone. Many people and the police said Shannon probably hired someone to play Jameer and that they were trying to set him up. 
Shannon also claimed that she never owned a gun. However, this turned out to be a lie. Shannon did have a gun, and she had gotten one from a co-worker, allegedly for protection against Jameer. This co-worker testified that he sold Shannon a gun in October 2006, months before Danita's murder. The gun was a 38 caliber revolver, just like the murder weapon. The prosecution also presented evidence to the jury of an allegation Shannon made against Jameer to show a vindictive pattern. It was an allegation regarding assault that the defense did not want the jury to hear about. After Danita's murder and while Shannon was out on bond, she told police that Jameer raped her. She said that he came to her house in Charlotte and raped her between 2.30 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. that morning. She told police that he cut her clothes off with a knife and held the knife to her throat. The court heard that Shannon told police that Jameer cut her thigh, penetrated her with a knife, and ejaculated. She claimed that she needed stitches as she had been penetrated by the knife. Pamela Zinkin, a detective in the sexual assault unit of the Charlotte Police Department, testified that based on the alleged time of the rape and Jameer's cell phone records, he would have had to travel from Charlotte to Greensboro for work at approximately 120 miles per hour without stopping for red lights to have committed the crime. The court heard that a rape kit was carried out and it was negative for semen. While there were lacerations to Shannon's neck and thigh, as well as abrasions to the outer labia, there were no injuries that required stitches and no injuries to the vaginal canal, and a nurse and a physician's assistant testified to this fact. The court heard that Shannon told Detective Zinkin on June 21st that the police should look for the knife in Jameer's trash can at his house. A couple of days later, Jameer put trash in his trash can for the first time since the alleged rape and found a knife at the bottom. There was nothing else in the trash can. He called the police and told them about the knife. The court heard testimony from one of his neighbors. They testified that on June 19th, they heard a thump and saw a vehicle drive away from Jameer's trash can. Another neighbor said that she saw somebody throw something into Jameer's trash can the same night and then drive away. This allegation, along with the falsified audio recordings, demonstrated a pattern of lies and vindictiveness against Jameer, all of which attempted to frame him. Prosecutors believe Shannon stalked and killed Danita in a jealous rage. She had what she wanted, Jameer. They believed that on the morning of the murder, Shannon brought a gun and hid outside of Danita's apartment, waiting for her to leave. Once Danita finally emerged, Shannon fired two shots to the back of Danita's head before fleeing the scene. No evidence was ever discovered linking Jameer to Danita's murder or to the harassment of Shannon. No murder weapon was ever found. After two days of deliberation, Shannon Crawley was found guilty of the murder of Danita Smith and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In court, Danita's mother said, because of what Shannon did, there is a void. You took her away from me. Someday I may forgive you, but right now I don't, and I hope you rot in hell. You're vile. You don't deserve to be a mother. Shannon still maintains her innocence, and so does her parents. In the end, the jury believed the facts over the stories presented. May Danita rest eternally and her family find healing. And thank you all for watching.